Hello to all you amazing Mets fans who are listening to Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Locked On Mets is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. On today's show, I was joined by Aram Layton, the host of Locked On Prospect, to talk about his latest top 100 list that included three Mets, Francisco Alvarez at number four, Brett Beatty at number 20, and Mark Vientos at number 44. Before we get to any of that, though, I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also follow the show at Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so for this week's Friday Farm Report, I am joined by Arm Layton, host of Locked On Prospects and the founder of Just Baseball Media. We are going to talk today about some of his Mets that were in the top 100 prospect list that came out a few weeks ago. We talked about this with our guy Jordan Grossman last week, so we're going to compare notes here about these main guys. And I got to start with Francisco Alvarez. I mean, comes in number four. I got all giddy. I had goosebumps when you wrote he might be the best prospect in baseball uh, come next year. So so what has you so enamored by this young catcher? It's funny, man. I had I had several Mets fans that are like friends of mine reach out and they're like, that write up fired me up. Like I was ready <laughs> to run through a wall. And it was just because I, I like Francisco Alvarez so much. But the other funny thing about it was I had a couple people reach out to me after I dropped the top 100 list and they're like, are you, are you a Mets fan? I'm like, no, I'm not at all. I, if anything, I grew up a Marlins fan. Um, I, I'm not a Mets fan. Honestly, I'd, like as a, the, the 10 year old arm would love to say that they all suck, but Alvarez is, is just special. I, it, there's, you know, nothing that I think one of your list or any of your listeners wouldn't know is like to do what he's doing at 19 years old. I think everybody knows how, how amazing that is. But when we look at just from the pure tool standpoint, He's so physical at 5'10", 230. When I saw him for the first time in person in the uh, in the Futures game, I was like, yeah, everyone talks about Jason Dominguez and his build, but I mean, this dude Alvarez is built like a refrigerator, and he hit a home run that I swear didn't go more than 20 feet off the ground and just went straight out of the yard. And I was like, okay, this guy's got real power. But when I watched at-bats and a lot more of just consistent at-bats from Francisco Alvarez, I realized, like, this guy – you didn't tell me he was 19, the way he uh, grinds out at bats, the way he's able to lay off of tough pitches. I, I saw him, you know, expand the zone and then they try to get him to do it again. And he makes that correction. I was just so impressed by how advanced he was. And then on the other side of it, his, his setup is a little bit reminiscent of Tyler O'Neill. And it's something that I think only guys that are extremely physical can do, which is start open. He's like preloaded into his back hip a little bit. And he knows all he's got to do is just bring that leg over and unload on the baseball. He doesn't need to have a big weight shift like Christian Yelich really getting into that back hip. He just presets into it, and he knows that he is so strong and has such ridiculous bat speed that he'll be able to, to hit bombs. And Tyler O'Neill is the same kind of build, uh, and, and it's clearly worked well for both of those guys. And, I mean, I think he's going to be special. Well, the thing about him is, I mean, I think we're seeing so many prospects come up at a young age and be able to hit. And I think that his bat, honestly, isn't that far away. I know it's crazy to say, but if you put Alvarez in a major league game, would we be that shocked if he could go two for four in a major league game right now? Like, I think his bat is so advanced. The only question is, how much time do you have to keep him in the minor leagues to develop as a catcher so that he's not going to hurt you defensively? Because that's obviously a big part of being a major league catcher. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think he he just needs the ABs to learn how guys are going to attack him. And, uh, you know, he's a little bit pull happy right now at times. And as he continues to realize that he can do damage to all fields. And uh, I saw towards the end of the year, especially in high A, they were attacking him away, seeing if he'll roll over. And uh, he, he definitely made some improvements in that regard. I, I think he could easily blend in for a little bit until they really start attacking your, your scouting report or your weaknesses. That's what ends up happening. But from the defensive side of things, I mean, I don't think he's going to move or anything. I don't think there's any concern about whether he's going to stay behind the dish. But it is a good point uh, from the respect that his 
bat is so far ahead of his glove just because of the bat, not an indictment on the glove as much that, you know, are, are, is it going to hold him back at all? I think we see something similar with Gabriel Moreno with the Blue Jays, another catching prospect that is such an advanced hitter. And if you're willing to have him learn on the fly a little bit, uh, I think he'll be good enough to be at least an average or slightly below average big league catcher after one more year in the minors. Uh, the, the question is, are you able to handle some of that maybe inconsistency behind the dish? I think he's one of those guys that is a quick learner. You can tell uh, from his at bats. And I think that would carry over behind the dish and he just has to go out there and do it. I think working with big league pitchers and, and getting up there in that situation uh, would help a lot. I, I talked to Anthony Mulrine from the angels uh, a catcher who made the jump from rookie ball to double a, and he's now in triple a and he was invited to spring training before the year. And he said, just being able to talk to Max Stassi and talk to some of those guys about just what they do, Kurt Suzuki, uh, just the little things, the intricacies that you and I maybe don't even look for in a game, uh, just changed the year for him and changed everything for him. And I think that's something that Alvarez will, will very much benefit from. To me, it sounds like uh, the Mets invested $40 million into James McCann to be a mentor. That That's what I got yeah. from that right there. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is what he can do to, to pay the franchise back. They got him paid. And uh, spring training, I'm putting his locker right next to Alvarez, and I'm saying, look, Get us back, James. You got you got to get this kid up to speed because he's going to take your job. But you're yeah. going to be a, a, a very well paid backup, so that's going to be all right. Yeah, I mean, and he's a good backup. I mean, you assume he's going to be a, bit, a little bit better next year, right? Like he has to be. Um, he was due for regression. I didn't think it would be like this, but he's a guy that even if he's not practicing what he might preach at that point, he knows a lot. And I think he'd be a really, really good mentor to him. So that's a perfect example. It's a veteran catcher that he could be around, veteran coaching that will be able to. You know, he'd advice from I'm excited to see what happens, you know, this year and how they decide to uh, work him in the offseason and uh, going into spring training. I think with the bat, it's it's going to be ready quickly and he'll be good enough behind the dish because of his athleticism that uh, I don't I don't foresee him being a liability. He moves well back there. He blocks well. Um, you know, the receiving can use some improvement, but there's some catchers in the big leagues right now that. Just they're they're just able to hit, and they we overlook the the lack of receiving. So uh, I don't think it'll be a, a major hold back or a restriction for Alvarez. I think the the biggest concern is that he become like a Gary Sanchez. You know, yes. I think that yeah. that's what everyone's worried about. New York catcher, it's kind of a an easy comp, but I do think that they are a little bit different. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if I, or I let you let you speak on that. I mean, no, what's the just difference that, I you see so between the two. I think he's just so much more athletic and, and, you know, in terms of hitting, I think they're, they're super different. I, I think he's got a way better approach, a way better swing, way less moving parts, but I just think he moves so much better behind the dish uh, than Gary does that there's almost no way he's going to be, you know, that, that caliber of defender. I also think he, he's a bit more of a grinder um, and, and that's a position where it's very important to be that. Built bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. Whether it's their coconut bar, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, German chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, or my personal favorite, cookies and cream. There's so many delicious flavors. There really is something for everyone. If you haven't tried them all, you can get a mixed box where you'll get two of each and you can see which ones you like best. These really are protein bars that taste like candy bars. They come covered in 100% chocolate. They're soft. They're easy to chew. And they're healthy. Built bars come low in calories, low in sugar. They're high in protein and high in fiber. You want to try Built Bar today? Go to builtbar.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at builtbar.com. Well, we, we obviously hope that Alvarez becomes uh, everything that, that we're expecting him to be because the Mets haven't had a prospect like this in some time. And I did write an article for Just Baseball talking about Alvarez and Beatty and Vientos and how the Mets haven't had these top yeah. offensive prospects. In a very long time, David Wright and Jose Reyes were the last time they had guys that were highly regarded that have panned out to be you know, perennial all-stars. So hopefully some of these guys can hit. And I think Brett Beatty, in some respects of the three prospects that you have ranked in your top 50 list, would it be uh, a stretch for me to say he might have the highest uh, floor of yes. those three guys? Just because I think the defense – I, I know you were a little bit lower on the defense. I've heard some really good things about his improvements this year. He got into some really good shape. He got lighter on his feet. Uh, he looks like he can at least hold his own at third base, if not be a little bit above average. So I've been impressed hearing those things. And then you look at his approach at the plate, and when it comes to you know the lower strikeout rate and the higher walk rate, 
it seems like he has a really good feel right now, especially at his young age. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, what I really liked from him uh, going into this year, he's a guy that we didn't see a ton of before. So I was, I, I liked the swing. I liked a lot of what I saw. Uh, that, but it had been limited. So I was really eager. He was one of the guys that I was very much looking forward to seeing. And he's exceeded any expectations I had. And I had some pretty high expectations on him. Uh, the hit tool, I would say, is further along than than anybody or a lot of people may have thought. He has such easy power to all fields that he really is able to let the ball travel, hit the ball where it's pitched. And I think he's learning now, too. I don't have to go pull side to do damage. Like he, we saw him go oppo in a place that it's very hard to go oppo at times with the wind. Uh, if you're a lefty in Brooklyn, uh, without problem. And the power, it, it's plus plus if he's able to tap into it all. And I think he's getting closer to that. But the biggest takeaway for me this year, as like you kind of touched on it, is yes, he's going to strike out in the twenty to twenty five percent range. But I always say no two strikeout rates are the same. And if you walk a lot to offset that. Uh, I think that's that's equally as important, and that's exactly what he did this year. Walked twelve percent of the time, and it seemed like he got better as he got more comfortable in Double A. You look over the numbers of the last month that he was there, last twenty five games or so, he was hitting over three hundred. Strikeout rate was in the low twenties. He was walking more. This is a guy that has a really good feel to hit. He learns well on the fly. Like you said, the defense has definitely improved. I don't think he's going to move to first. He's definitely sticking at third. And Vientos, who we'll get to, is a guy that's going to probably end up having to move positions. Uh, but power hitting third baseman, that's an average to above average defender and surprisingly good hit tool. I mean, there's a lot to be excited about there with Brett Beatty. And, and I would concur that he has the highest floor after what he showed uh, with his hit tool and approach this year. Yeah, it might be too early to say the next David Wright, but certainly – uh, more promise than, than a lot of prospects the Mets have had at third base. I'm going to throw a little curveball at you now. Since we're talking about plate discipline, let's get into Ronnie Mauricio. I think a lot of people would have Mauricio right now. Some would even have above Beatty or at least, you know, a top three offensive prospect in the Mets farm system. You did not have him in your top 100 list. What led you to, to not include him? What is it about his game that you just don't like? Yeah, he was he was a just miss guy. Uh, I had him on until until the the late uh, the late weeks going in as as some other guys just really impressed me. Uh, Luis Matos and uh, Joey Weimer and a few other prospects, Matt Brash, that had just really I got more of a look at them. So it wasn't as much as Mauricio just falling out of grace completely. I, I had had my reservations a little bit. He was going to be in the back end even going into this year and as the year went on. I just think that there's a list of concerns with certain prospects like this that you go into the year with, and you know that he's more of a development project. He's still 20 years old. And those concerns I go into the year with, and I want to see how he addressed them or if he addressed them. And it, it, you just watch him this year, and it's it's like the same guy that we saw in 2019. And, and I know I got a lot of like pushback on the Ronnie Mauricio thing. Uh, but I've talked to some other teams, too, because I, I always try to hold myself accountable here uh, before I put the lists out and stuff. And uh, with contacts I have, just like, am I crazy? Like, tell me where I'm crazy. And nobody really had an issue with me omitting Ronnie Mauricio. Uh, and not that that's like a deciding factor for me. But if somebody was in my ear saying, you're out of your mind, then I'll, I'll you know revisit it. But nobody pushed back on that. I had people say that. I shouldn't even be considering him in the top 100. So I was just very, I was honestly surprised because I still think he's a fringe top 100 guy the, to, to get into him specifically though. I mean, the tools are there, right? He, he's a switch hitter. He's six, three, 170. I, I just don't love his swing. There's a lot of moving parts. There's an over aggressive approach at this point where you know, you, you've now had it several seasons in the minor leagues, a lot of at bats, and you're still expanding the zone, expanding the zone. The strikeouts continue to climb. Yes, he's hit 19 home runs, but if you're not even getting on base at a 290 cliff in high A, uh, he gets the forced promotion that I thought was a little bit weird. And we'll see how he does next year. If it all clicks for him, you know, I'll wear that one. And I, and I hope it does. And I hope I can wear that one. But he's going to be Rule 5 eligible. And you know, they have a tough decision to make with the Mets. Are they going to try and trade him? Do they hold on to him? This is a guy that doesn't look like he's any, you know, anywhere close to the big leagues. And you're going to have to add him to your 40-man roster? I mean, what did he show you in high A to, to convince you that he's ready for the big leagues? Average to below average defense, 290 on base. Yes, he hit 19 homers, but that only gets you a 94 WRC plus, a 5% walk rate. 
I'm just not too encouraged by that. He hits the ball on the ground more than 50% of the time. It's, it just seems like it's going to take a lot for it all to come together. And, you know, he also made 22 errors this year. So I, I just think there's too many question marks in his game. And he hasn't really shown much in any of those departments to improve them. Yeah, I don't want to make it seem like I am a huge Mauricio believer. Uh, I, I did want to play devil's advocate with you a little bit. My thing with Ryan Mauricio, and I've talked to you about this, is I, I really think he's the type of prospect that has enough tools that there's a team out there that can easily talk themselves into Ronnie Mauricio as the headline of some type of a trade. And, oh, and so, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. I think there's a team out there that would do it. You know, so, I mean, let's just say theoretically, the Mets this offseason want to want to take a gamble on Byron Buxton. I, you know, it would take more than Ronnie Mauricio, but that would be the type of prospect that would start a conversation, I believe. And, uh, and I think that the 19 home runs he hit, the fact that he showed some pop playing in a league where he was still younger than a lot of people, I think there is – and he definitely also, if you do look at his season, he started off really slow and then got hot as he adjusted to that league. So th that's my big thing this offseason. I would try to to sell if you can, uh, especially if you can get a player that can really impact your, your fortunes next year. Yeah, I agree. And this is that's to piggyback off of that. There, there's something that I think kind of furthers my point. Maybe if if Mets fans disagree with this, then. Uh, then they have a, a fair disagreement. But my question would be, are you more comfortable if you're going to trade for a Buxton, let's say, are you more comfortable trading Ronnie Mauricio or are you more comfortable trading Beatty or Mark Vientos? Which of the three are you dealing? I think that at this point, fans would probably say either Vientos or Mauricio. I think that Beatty has has, has risen above those guys. Uh, and I think Vientos, it's, it's just a concern that is he just another J.D. Davis that maybe has a little bit more consistent pop? I, I think that's the concern right now with the defense. Yeah, and we'll get into the Vientos because for me, the, the power, I know J.D. hits the ball hard, but it's more line drive hard. What Mark Vientos does, he misses baseballs that go out. It's I don't want to compare anybody's power to an Aaron Judge or a John Carlos Stanton because it's just a different level. But he puts up some of the best exit velos. And he has that same ability that they have where he will fillet a baseball, like miss it, and it will get out. And that's just something that to me is is insane. Uh, I just think you can't teach that. Uh, and he seems like he's really figured it out a lot. He's also not very old either. And Mauricio, it's not like he's a gold glove or a shortstop. So it, there's definitely, I can understand the preference, uh, given that he's a bit positionless, but I, w I would be very upset as a Mets fan if Vientos was dealt instead of Mauricio, and it wasn't because the other team preferred Vientos. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, there's now even more odds, props, and contests available at betonline.eg, which continues to be your number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% welcome bonus with the promo code NFL100. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. From football, basketball, baseball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Hey, Mets fans, I want to let you know about an incredible app that everyone who buys gas needs to know about, and it's called Get Upside. My listeners are making up to $0.25 cents per gallon every time they fill up. Just download the free Get Upside app in the App Store or Google Play right now. Use the promo code BASEBALL, and you'll get a bonus $0.25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to $0.50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using Get Upside. Just download the app for free and use the promo code BASEBALL to get up to $0.50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back. There's no catch. The cash back gets added right to your account. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, your PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use that promo code BASEBALL to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Yeah, I think for me, it's changed a lot this year. I think I... I, like many others, had that prospect fatigue. But then from talking to you, talking to some of my other friends who, who are covering the minor leagues and looking at it pretty closely, 
I, I really can, can see now that Vientos has pop that is that is pretty special. And it's definitely swayed me on that. I am concerned about what you do defensively. I've, you know, it's more of the same problem that you have with JD that has me concerned. And the Mets have just boxed them into this place where they have Robinson Cano. So if there is a DH, I mean, what are you going to do in it next year? You know, you still have Dominic Smith. You still got to figure out what to do with JD. It's just they got five DHs on this roster. Um, but the one thing I'll say when it comes to defense is everyone was saying that Pete Alonso could never field a position a couple years ago. And he's turned himself into a good first baseman, if not an above average first baseman. So I'm not going to say that a 21 year old can't take a bunch of fly balls this off season and learn how to play left field at at least an average level. And I think that's the hope of Vientos at this point. And he's got a mega arm too, uh, which helps him a little bit. Even if you're not a great defender to have that big time arm, that helps hedge it a little bit, but I agree. I mean, there's the Dom Smith, the J.D. Davis, that that issue of positionless guys. But on the flip side, you could feel a little bit better about letting a J.D. Davis go if you continue to gain confidence in what Mark Vientos is doing. And the difference is Vientos is going to hit so much. I mean, J.D. Davis can hit, but his numbers against lefties, I think, are more more exciting, right? And what Vientos will be able to do to lefties and righties if he really taps into his potential here, you'll be able to deal with the – mediocre defense uh if that's the case and again he's still only 21 years old so i think that there's there's a lot that can change there but if you put him in right field i don't think he'll be the worst right fielder in baseball and there's a chance that he could be one of the better power hitters in baseball if it all works out for him so i think i'll take that you know i'll definitely take that that kind of push and pull i think you mentioned the arm and dominic smith even though you look at the metrics now, terrible. I mean, the beginning of the year, there was one point that Dom had like an above average defensive run saved. And it was just shocking that that could even be possible in a defensive metric. But it, what the Mets did a great job of this year is they they invested in their analytics. They did a better job with, with how they, they set up their, their fielders. And they, they made Dom's defense look passable. But Dom has a, an arm of a first baseman. So if you can position Vientos the right way and exactly. he brings that arm to the table... I think you could get by. And again, I think what you're saying is that when you're talking about the Batman, we should focus on on that a little bit. What Vientos has is the potential to be a 40 home run guy, as you said, yeah. which is not something that, that you can say about a lot of prospects. It's not something you can say about a lot of baseball players in the major yeah. leagues, period. You know, so it's like that that is what's special. And of course, it's more likely that it doesn't happen than it does happen. But if you can dream on something like that, uh, that's obviously a reason to be excited. And I think he moves a little bit better than Dom Smith, at least for now, uh, given Dom Smith's 26, but he's still young. I mean, I, I just, I really believe in Vientos. I believe how easy the power is. I love the adjustments he made uh, this season or in this off season going into the year with his swing. He's been much more patient, but you know what? To, to wrap up on Mauricio, if he figures it all out and becomes a stud, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I just think it's so unlikely at this point compared to some of the other prospects that it's hard for me to justify putting him in over some of the other guys I put him in over. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's got a lot of tools and it'll be interesting to see if uh, any teams are biting on him. I think that was part of the reason why they moved him to double a, to be honest, is because given that he's a rule five eligible guy, they don't, if a team is almost daring them, like we're not going to trade for him. You're going to have to protect him for the rule five, moving him to double a almost provides the facade that he's closer to the big leagues than he really is. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. I don't think he really earned that promotion, if we're going to be honest, even though, like you said, he did do better uh, in the latter half of the year. Yeah, I think that uh, it's going to be a fascinating offseason, and uh, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention as we're talking, it's it's a Mets-Marlins series right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't think either of us care about it, but here's the thing that, that strikes me. If the Mets were in the race right now, we know the Marlins would have taken those first two games, and uh, they, they ended up, you know, it's it's a tank battle. And the Marlins are doing a little bit better at that. Uh, what, what's your experience been this season covering the Marlins, going from a, a playoff berth in a 60-game season last year to uh, this letdown this season? <laughs> you know, dude, I, I knew that it was going to be worse. I knew they weren't going to make the playoffs. But it has been about as bad as I could imagine. I mean, if, yes, they've had guys get injured, but so have the Mets. Uh, so have other teams that have succeeded. They didn't do much in the offseason to to make sure that they could get back to where they were. They didn't get a closer. They didn't get any 
even really good experienced relievers lead the league in blown saves. And then it's like the little things getting picked off. They've gotten picked off 22 times. The next most without in major VR on their team. <laughs> and without VR, they remove VR and they have 22 pickoffs. Next most in baseball is 13. So when I look at things like that, it's just like what's what's it's like the bad news bears to be honest. And uh, it was a long year. There's a lot to be excited about, though, with the pitching and some of the young prospects. And I think they're going to be busy this offseason making some trades from those pitching prospects. I mean, Sandy Alcantara has been special. Trevor Rogers is phenomenal. Like, there's pieces. They're not lost. They're not the Rockies. But to take that step backwards, even though, you know, a lot of people took the success last year with the grand assault, it, it was pretty frustrating. I, I can't lie. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. I don't know what's worse, having a team that's out of it all year. Or when you have a team that was in first place for for a good portion of the season just yeah. drops off a cliff. So I, I, I might I might have to take you. When it comes to misery, I think I might be leading the league right now. At least in the second half, it's been pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, at least when Door's been a little bit better, Baez has been pretty good, and it looks like he's probably going to come back. Right? Is is that the the perception? That's the vibe right I, I now. Think yeah, it's going to blow through the luxury tax too, um, and I'm interested to see what they do, but. Um, the one silver lining I think from this year is that it's going to light a fire under Cohen to just make things happen. Could be dangerous. Could be dangerous. Uh, we saw what happened when Brody Van Wagenen got excited, but I, I think he'll open up the checkbook after such a frustrating year. So that's the good side of things, I guess. I don't want to uh, rip somebody's tweet, but I just saw something right before we hit record where someone said like, like the Brody Van Wagenen GM of the year, executive of the year for the Mariners, because you know, he got them off the Cano contract. He sold high on Diaz. He uh, he non-tendered Seawald and Flexen, who have been uh, big parts of their team. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's done great for the Mariners. He did a great job. He really did. He he stacked the deck for him. I don't know. I, maybe he has a a, a little uh, secret minority stake in the team. We'll see what happens <laughs> with that. But uh, thank you so much for coming on, talking prospects with me. Uh, tell everyone where they can find all your work. Uh, absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at armwaiting8. Uh, you can check out a lot of the written work and podcasts and top 100 list over at justbaseball.com. I'll be dropping my top 10 Mets prospects very soon, uh, which you'll get a chance to look at, Ryan. I'm excited to finish that up. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited uh, to keep going forward here. Got the Arizona Fall League. I'll be all over the place. Uh, the prospecting never stops. So I uh, appreciate you having me on. For sure.